Hey, hello and happy Sunday, everybody. I know we're a little bit late today, of course. Gotta love the technical issues. Um, hopefully the camera's coming through clearly. I had to use a different camera because my nice camera didn't want to connect today. So just another day uh, trying to bring a workshop to you on a Sunday, which is supposed to be a day off, but I like doing this. So uh, I like to come in and chat with you guys every Sunday and try to give you some more knowledge so that you start your week off right uh, as it comes to your retirement planning. So uh, what we're gonna talk about today is what is long-term care, right? And why am I even talking about this? Uh, the re big reason why I'm talking about this is one, there's been a ton of questions in the group here, but um, two, I've been talking to a lot of you, uh, you know, on some of our retirement strategy calls, and it's like almost nobody is thinking ahead about long-term care, right? And in all honesty, it's probably one of the biggest risks for most people when it comes to making sure they don't run out of money. Uh, because if you have a long-term care event, it can be pretty darn expensive, which we're going to talk about today. And, and so lately, I've just been asking folks, you know, what is your plan for long-term care, right? And it doesn't mean you have to go to the insurance policy route. It's one way to think about it. But you can also self-fund if that's something you want to do. But the thing is, you need a plan, right? You need a plan. You need to estimate cost. We don't know what they're going to be exactly, but we know what averages are. We know what statistics are. And so we can use those to help us guide and make a good decision when it comes to planning for our long-term care as part of our retirement planning puzzle that we're putting together here. So um, just like investments are one piece um, and insurance is one piece, long-term care is one piece of that insurance uh, when it comes to getting your retirement plan right. So we're going to talk about this today. Got some really good information. So you may want to get out a pen and paper. Uh, I think there's some good stuff here for you to be thinking about and then use this information to include in your long-term care planning. So that's what I'm hoping for you is that you bring this information in and you actually start using it um, for your long-term care plan. So hopefully everything's coming through nice and clear today and I'm gonna bring my screen up here so I can share with you what I'm looking at. Okay, wonderful. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this is coming through clear. All right, so what is long-term care? That's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today in our workshop. Good, it looks like it's coming through clear. Um, so if, uh, if you know exactly what long-term care is, let me know, you know, what your thoughts are in the comments, but we're going to talk about in detail here, um, exactly what it is and how you should be thinking about it when it comes to the next steps here of retirement planning. So, um, the definition, right? And this is from Rosalie and Robert Kane. Um, but long-term care is the assistance given over a sustained period of time to people who are expecting long-term difficulties in functioning, right? And as we're going to, as we're going to talk about, this could be a lot of different things. Uh, when it comes to that, but we're going to get really clear is in what we're talking about. So um, long-term care, or I should say the term long-term care, covers a range of services one may require to meet their personal care needs due to chronic illness, physical disability, or cognitive impairment. Okay, so this is a wide range. There's actually a wide range of things that could qualify here. Okay. Um, these needs are not acute and in fact, they're not even necessarily medical in nature. Most are related to what we call activities of daily living, okay? So these include things like bathing, dressing, using the toilet, transferring to or from bed, you know, care for incontinence and uh, in eating, okay? So uh, any real thing that, that you couldn't do um, yourself, and it's really two of these um, ADLs or activities of daily living, that's going to be part of uh, your long-term care, and that will trigger what we call long-term care events. All right, so while people over the uh, age of 65 represent the majority of long-term care recipients, um, long-term care is not reserved just for seniors. Anyone of any age needing extended care is technically receiving long-term care. However, you know, for our purposes, we're gonna focus on the needs of seniors, right? Because that's what most of you are here. Um, so as life expectancies have continued to rise, and I think we're going to see life expenses continue to rise a lot more. Uh, when you look at some of the medical advancements that are coming and some of the data that we're seeing, what it looks like is, you know, living people living to 120, 130 is going to be pretty normal. Uh, I know a lot of you think you're going to pass away early because your parents passed away early, but that just might not be the case. And the thing is, you might, you know, be living a lot longer than you expected, but you may not be able to do everything you used to do. And this is where long-term care comes in. But uh, more and more people are finding that they will need some sort of care as they get older, okay? So it's actually estimated that almost 70% of people turning 65 today will need long-term care at some point. And a full 20% will need it more than five years, okay? So that's a, that's a big number, okay? When you look at seven out of 10 of people here are gonna need some sort of long-term care, that is a big, big, scary indication that um, that we're going to have some big problems. The long-term care insurance market is honestly kind of a mess. 
and I put out a message to a big group of other advisors that I know, a few thousand of them, and in all honesty, no one has a good answer, right? So this is one of those things where it's like, well, if you don't plan for it, you can be in big trouble. And if you do plan for it, you may end up spending money on something you never use. But I, you know, you have to really look at your situation and figure out what's worse, right? If you don't have the money, um, and or if you do have some money and you have some assets put aside, and then you have to spend down hundreds of thousands of dollars um, before you can qualify for any sort of government care. This is just a really tricky area, but again, I think everybody needs a plan, and a plan is the place to start. Okay, so this is especially uh, this need is especially great for women who are twice as likely to need nursing home care than men. So, and the average um, need for long-term care is about 2.6 years for women versus 2.3 years for men. I've actually seen re uh, some numbers as well that have said 1.5 years uh, for men or 1.6 years, and, but the 2.6 years has been pretty uh, consistent for women. So, again, uh, and then when you're looking at, uh, let's say you are married, and in general, the, the women is gonna live longer. So again, there's multiple reasons why you should be extra considerate when you're looking at planning for um, the female in the household, okay? So despite these statistics, most studies show that very few Americans think they're ever going to need long-term care. Um, only one-third of Americans have even the most basic plans for their future care needs, right? So that's one in three people had the most basic. So all that means is they've thought about it and they might think that they're going to have some money to put aside potentially for that. It doesn't mean they have an actual plan. So this is something really, really important, guys. I really, folks, I mean, please, please, please take this seriously as you're going into your retirement planning. Um, a lot of times what, what we'll do is at least plan for two years for each spouse at a minimum and then sort of look at how the assets play out right so we'll look at the cost of care today put a separate inflation number on that because generally the cost of care in medical um, goes up faster than average inflation and we'll figure out how much that's expected to be in the future and it's generally for like the last two years of your lifespan and then we kind of take that number back into today's dollars figure out how much we'll need um, to put aside so that we can invest that for the long term that's for people that want to sell fund the other ways to look at it are looking at um, long-term care insurance policies and there's traditional and hybrid policies um, to look at, okay? So, you know, even fewer people have saved adequately for the possibility of needing long-term care. I mean, in all honesty, uh, there's a lot of people having even saved adequately for just basic retirement, right? And when they're getting close to their retirement age, you know, the cost of healthcare, let's say healthcare is 800 to 1200 um, a month, a lot of people literally can't afford that. And so, you know, let alone talking about long-term care, which may not show up for 20 or 30 years, you know, I think this is this is something that's a, I don't want to call it a crisis, but maybe you can call it that because if people are having struggles to afford, you know, an extra $12,000 a year for a couple of years so that they can retire at 63 instead of 65, then how are you going to afford care that's $100,000 a, a year potentially or more um, if you were to go to a full-time care facility? So um, the other thing I want you to be thinking about is that many people still believe that it will be covered by Medicare. And that's just simply not true. So Medicare does not cover long-term care, okay? So this is something that will be on you if you do require long-term care. So, so the, right? Why the resistance, okay? Almost nobody wants to talk about this. Nobody wants to talk about things like estate planning as well when you are potentially gonna pass away. But this is one of those things that is just, really needs to be talked about okay and i highly recommend as you're going through your planning process and we do this with all our clients by the way we talk about this we talk about what your views are how you want to plan for it and you know using things like assets home equity or buying a policy you know what is what how are you going to address this right but in reality i think a lot of people are, are, are in denial about their own aging and mortality and then the second thing is the high cost associated with long-term care and a cost for many that may seem unattainable you know um, we see things all the time where people are saying that, oh, it's just long-term care is just too expensive. Well, what I don't think you understand is that there's not like one thing is like you check a box, like you have long-term care and it's this X number of dollars or not, right? There's different types of policies and there's different amounts of coverage. And so where we generally want to start is what your budget is to be able to afford some sort of long-term care uh, insurance if you're going to go policy route. And then you can back into that and then design a policy that you know gives you the most coverage for what you can actually afford, okay? It's not just an all or nothing type of thing, um, but I have seen certain policies that have been presented by companies and they're just insane, right? Um, just really, really insane in the cost. Um, so the other thing with that is, you know, a lot of people uh, with regular long-term care, they may think it's, you know, it's an all or nothing, right? Where either use it or you lose it. 
And that is true for tr traditional policies, but there's also things called hybrid policies that have like a built-in, in, you know, they're an insurance uh, policy with a rider, right? So if, the, in, uh, if you never use the long-term care portion, then the insurance pays out because if you pass away without using it. But if you do need long-term care, then that insurance policy can then flip into a long-term care policy um, and give you some coverage there. So there's multiple ways to approach the subject. What I want to do today is educate you on um, what it is and what you should be thinking about. Okay. All right, so not preparing for the cost, however, may jeopardize your financial independence, lifestyle, and financial legacy. Again, going back to the, the woman in the relationship generally living longer. If you're, if women, if your husband um, enters a long-term care facility because you can no longer, longer care for him, and it, that ends up costing you $100,000 a year, and then you get left without assets, that can really, really jeopardize your um, financial independence there. So as we will see, long-term care planning involves much more than, than making a decision about whether to purchase a long-term care policy or not, okay? So I want to talk um, about levels of care because there are different levels of care when it comes to uh, long-term care. Um, so long-term care is generally divided into three categories. So that is skilled nursing care, intermediate care, and custodial care, all right? So the majority of all long-term care is personal care, custodial care um, level. So this provides assistance with activities that they daily living or the ADLs, as I mentioned, um, or with supervision for those with cognitive impairment, such as dementia or Alzheimer's. That's a dangerous one, right? So as we continue to live longer because of medical advancements, maybe our, our bodies and our organs, you know, can be fixed and, and they're, they're actually 3D printing organs at this point, right? But when you have cognitive decline, that's really tough, you know, and I, you, they can't really replace your brain at this point. So this is something uh, is a much bigger concern because you can be in care for things like dementia or Alzheimer's for quite a bit longer than the average uh, if it was just more of a, a physical type of ailment. So this care is most often provided by unpaid caregivers such as family members or friends, right? So a lot of times you'll have one spouse member take care of the other spouse member, all right? you know, and that's, that's normal. So, in fact, over 70% of long-term care is provided by unpaid family members. But the, and the majority of these family members are employed women who devote an average of 20 hours per week to providing long-term care. So this can get um, challenging as well, where if you were doing other things and you have to dedicate now 20 hours per week to providing long-term care, that can really put a dent in things if you were running a business or had some sort of income still if this didn't happen later, if this happened earlier on in your uh, retirements. All right. So... Uh, while there is no direct cost uh, per, uh, for care provided by family members, there are considerable indirect costs to the caregiver, including loss of wages and deterioration of their own health due to the demands of caregiving. Being a caregiver is very demanding. You know, dealing with sick people is very tough. <clears throat> this is why, uh, excuse me, why nurses and doctors get paid so much because they're dealing with this stuff. And it's very difficult, not only uh, mentally, but also physically. Uh, custodial care can also be provided by home health aides Certified Nursing Assistance and Companion Services. Okay, so frequently, um, once an individual moves from his home to a long-term care facility, the level of care increases to intermediate or skilled care, both of which are provided by skilled and licensed professionals. So formal caregivers include a wide array of professionals, including physicians, nurses, therapists, dietitians, and resp I can't, respite, respite caregivers. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. <laughs> All right, uh, so the long-term care settings, okay? Let's talk about long-term care settings. So while most of us think of traditional nursing homes when we think of long-term care, you should be aware that of alternatives to nursing homes that have expanded over time. Options include home-based care, right? So a lot of people are gonna offer home-based care because they prefer to save the cost, number one, and then just take care of each other for as long as they can. Uh, there are also things like adult daycare and assisted living communities, as well as skilled nursing care available in nursing homes and hospice care that can be provided in a facility or at home. So these alternatives can, be, uh, can often be more suited to the individual patient's needs and can be more affordable. All right, home health care services. So this industry is absolutely exploding, right? I, I know people that run companies and the demand is so high, and what, that, what that's doing is actually driving up the cost, right, in, in certain areas. So care provided either at the patient's home um, or that, that of a family member. Home care services make up over 70% of all long-term care expenses. Um, care can be provided by a home health care agency, an independent caregiver who delivers home care, a family member, or by a community-based residential facility. 
Um, there are also adult daycare centers. Again, I know some of these, for most of you folks, this seems like a long way off, okay? But I'm just trying to get you to think about this. Um, think about this now so that you have a plan in place because if you were wanting to buy a policy, um, once you get past 60, it does start to creep up pretty significantly over the next few years. Uh, so adult daycare, so, uh, daycare centers are um, can, um, starting to offer adult daycare where people with few impairments can spend a day, right? Have lunch, socialize with others, and be under the watchful eyes of trained staff. So this is more for folks that don't, you know, don't have a ton of um, ailments and, and physical disabilities. This is where they're still pretty active and can still get out, but um, needs, can still need a, a watchful eye. So these are an especially useful alternative when the primary caregivers, like a spouse or children, must work um, during regular hours. So this is kind of a hybrid type of situation. All right, um, and then we have board and care homes. So these are sometimes called uh, adult foster care homes. These are often good long-term care solutions for individuals who are fairly healthy and independent, but who find a home or apartment more than they can handle. So uh, residents of board and care homes generally have individual rooms and bathroom facilities, uh, meals, laundry, and housekeeping services are provided for all. So this is one of probably the, I would say more popular um, in a sense where you're still can be active, you're still pretty independent, but you have the, the main things taken care of. You know, Honestly, I would love to have something for this right now. If I can have someone take care of my meals, laundry, and my housekeeping, that would be really nice. Um, I would, I would uh, opt into that at this point. But uh, some board and care plans provide for van service for residents to churches, senior citizen centers, cultural events, and shopping malls. Generally, trained staff can help with the life, light self-maintenance, like dressing for an additional fee. Okay, so those are that facility. Okay, and then we have the assisted living facilities. Okay, so these facilities are an intermediate step in a long-term care continuum. So it's kind of, you know, the next step after you can't do an in-home care. Um, residents share meals and other activities and can receive personal assistance that is needed to maintain their independence. Residents would be unable to live on their own, but do not require full-time medical attention, right? So again, assisted uh, living facilities, pretty popular. Those are in a lot of communities around the U.S. And again, that's something else that is um, becoming much more popular, especially in the higher cost of living states um, where, you know, rent is going up and things like that, where people can't quite afford. Um, the entry fee to an assisted living facility starts at roughly $100,000, but can be much higher. And so in some cases, though, this fee is returned to a resident's heirs upon death, either in part or full. So I've seen um, cases in the past where people will pay like a big chunk of money, right? They'll pay in like $250,000, for example, then that will cover the person. And if that's not used up, then that gets returned. Um, but if it does get, used, uh, does get used up, then usually the person can stay a little bit longer. There's a lot of different variations with this. So um, if you are dealing with a, a, a parent, for example, that's dealing with this, you really want to shop and try to make a deal because you can do that sometimes. So in addition, there's a monthly fee that averages about $3,500 per month and most care is private pay, okay? So this is, this is where Medicare is not going to come in and take care of this for you. All right, um, and then we have continuing care retirement communities, sometimes called lifetime, life care communities. So CCRCs operate much like an assisted living facility, but are capable of caring for residents as their needs change. So fairly healthy residents can live independently in their own apartments, but as they lose their ability to handle the ADLs, the activities of daily living, they are guaranteed access to more skilled care in another part of the facility, okay? So CCRCs generally require new residents to make an initial payment, sometimes as high as $100,000 per resident, um, followed by monthly maintenance payments, and certain services can be built separately. So uh, the cost, quality, and oversight by state regulators of these uh, different care facilities vary greatly from state to state. I've heard some, um, some people have seen state facilities and they're great, and then some are a complete nightmare, and the same thing goes with these things here, okay? All right, so now I would like to talk about the cost of care. This is something I think people really underestimate. And if you are in your late 50s, early 60s, then you should be looking at about triple the cost, right, in the future, in future dollars of what this care is going to be. Because with the uh, inflation, probably about 5 or 6% on this type of care, unless the robots come in and save us and take care of us, this is something that can be a little bit scary when you look at the big numbers. So, um, regardless of the type of long-term care required, there is one constant that the care costs money and lots of it. So according to the U.S. Department of Labor, long-term care is the greatest uninsured risk Americans face. The actual cost does vary by state facility and level of care provided, but according to Genworth 2016 Cost of Care Survey, the national median cost 
for a one-year stay in a private room in a nursing care home is a little more than $92,000 or $253 per day. So if you are looking into purchasing long-term care insurance, you know, around $260 per day or so is um, a decent amount of coverage, but you don't have to go that high, by the way. You know, you can do things like $160 per day and then save on the cost of the insurance policy. There's a lot of ways to, to work a policy into place if it looks like it's going to be a bit good fit for you. Um, so don't always assume it's just an all or nothing type of deal. And if the person you're working with is telling you that, then you probably should be shopping around for someone else to work with, okay? All right, so some states had average annual expenses of less than $70,000, while others were more than $150,000. Um, expenses in an assisted living facility might be about half the cost of a nursing home. In either case, the, an extended stay translates into, into many dollars being spent. And I've been seeing, even in uh, the Midwest these days, you know, I've been seeing in, uh, in Texas uh, about seven or $8,000 a month. I've seen in Michigan about seven or $8,000 a month. You know, you go out to the, the more expensive areas like New York and California, then it can definitely go up from there. But this is not cheap care, folks. And so um, if you want to make sure you're taken care of, you really want to build this into your retirement plan so that at least you have a certain amount of money set aside to cover yourself or possibly looking at investing into some sort of policy to, to help cover part of the cost, okay? So uh, <clears throat> a few thousand dollars probably won't break anyone, but a few hundred thousand dollars would pose a significant risk to the financial security of most people. And remember that Medicare only covers 100 days of care. And then only if an individual has been previously hospitalized for three consecutive days prior to needing long-term care. So it's real tricky, you know, working through the system here, but um, you gotta remember that Medicare does not cover long-term care, okay? It's 100 days of care. And then you have to meet the other um, restrictions that are built into that. Okay, so the question becomes, you know, how to pay for long-term care expenses and manage this risk. So as it turns out, um, options have been increasing as providers are trying to help people deal with these expenses. In addition to just writing a check, the major options we'll consider will be long-term care insurance, life insurance annuities, reverse mortgages, and Medicaid, right? So those are kind of the major options um, you're gonna look into and how you approach this is gonna be unique to your individual situation, okay? So um, if you would like additional assistance and you wanna talk about this, um, I offer complimentary consultations that we can help you chat and work through your, um, your overall retirement planning scenario. Um, I call them our retirement strategy consultations. We'll spend about 45 minutes to an hour going through your, your individual situation, the things you're doing well, some of the things you may not be doing well, and some of the things that I recommend that you need to get in place, okay? And if uh, you wanna take that, that information and do it on your own, that's great. And if you wanna to talk to us about how we can help you, we can talk about that too. So to do that, you're gonna to go to keepitsimplefinancial.com forward slash talk. Once again, that's keepitsimplefinancial.com forward slash talk. Um, and that's all I have for you today. So I appreciate you all watching. Um, I will also put this link down in the comments so it's easy to click on if you do wanna schedule a talk. Pretty booked out right now, so it might be a couple weeks to get a, get a meeting scheduled. But uh, if you are looking to get your retirement plan in place between the end of the year, early 2020, I definitely recommend starting to, talk, um, starting to speak about it now and starting to work on getting that strategy in place so that you know what you should be doing one, two, and three steps down the road, okay? So um, once again, my name is Jason Hamilton. I'm a certified financial planner. This is what we do. We help people specializing uh, here in retirement, especially early retirement, um, especially if you want to retire before 65 and pre-Medicare. We really do a lot of work with folks, making sure their income stays within the guidelines when it comes to uh, qualifying for healthcare subsidies, if that's the route you're gonna go, or helping you sift through all the options in the open market if you're gonna look for another way to handle these things. But uh, long-term care is just one aspect of that. And um, there's many more to include in your retirement plan. So appreciate y'all watching. Like I said, uh, have a wonderful Sunday and I will be seeing you very soon. Okay, bye-bye now.